Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Counterside video. Alright, today's video is going to be something that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Uh, sorry that this has been taking a while, but I just figured this is the most important topic and there's a lot of things to cover right here. So let's talk about gears in general and hopefully I'll cover as much as I can. If not, we'll make a part 2 of this video. So let's jump into it. Everything you need to know about the gears. Gear guide for 2022. Now keep in mind as of me making this video, there's some things that's still not available in global yet in terms of the gears and game etc. But a lot of things do apply to a certain extent. So hopefully, uh, we're gonna jump through and fro between my global account and my C account and show you guys a couple of things. Now we're gonna jump into the straight into the first point of topic, which is the best place to farm gears. All right. So uh, probably if you guys watched my video yesterday, you would probably have known this, but right here in this particular world map whenever you get raids that's going to be the best place to farm gears every single raid that you see sent by your friends sent by your consortium members you want to attack them because the plague exchange right here this is going to give you milestones to build better gears now these are the superconductive tokens all right so if you guys are not aware this is going to rotate different seasons right now in c server we have these inhibitor rates and this gives you the polymer tokens all right so for global server right now we have the superconductive tokens they both do the same thing they exchange for the gears in general right when you are farming gears ideally you want to be able to obtain that so what makes this the best place to farm gears because you have a chance to get all of this selector t7 ssr britra selector uh, too bad you cannot select the set option you can choose which particular one that you want either the case the plate the the suit all right these are t7 gears as you can see you definitely get more and more as you hit more and more milestone for sure so you also get a weapon selector later on for either counter soldier or mech right moving on forward and then you can see now you get to select the accessory between all of these by now i hope you guys are aware that a different type of category of characters are going to require different type of gear sets so far we only have mechs we have soldiers we have counters all right so counters are going to require counter gears mechs will require mech gears as you can see they look a little bit different these are all counter gears and then we also have soldiers that can benefit from soldier gears all right you cannot interchange them each of them will need their own ones now let's talk about rarity of gears right so t1 t2 t3 t4 all right it all goes up to t7 so obviously t6 and t7 is going to be in most case your end game but early on uh, gathering a bunch of t4 and t5 even t1 and t2 ideally are going to be very helpful early on so let's talk about which one you ideally want to keep if you see anything that's skill haze or anything that's attack speed you want to keep those those are super valuable especially early on in global right now because you barely get much gears right so for example this one this is a skill haze uh, set right here cooldown set and then you can see i even get a school ha skill haze substat right here right so this is an attack speed so ideally you want to keep this even the lower rarities one even you get like t2 of this you want to keep why because you need four bits all right so these are going to be way harder to collect four piece off uh, compared to a lot of other sets which only require two sets off so how many options are there so let's jump into it so skill haste and attack speed is by far the one of the best gear sets you can obtain now generally those are the ones that i will keep in terms of offensive gears for now in global you have access to attack sets all right i would recommend keeping these attack sets if you can attack sets are quite uh, easy to to set them together because you only need two piece and it gives attack plus 10 percent so later on once the shadow hall shadow gear comes in global is coming around july all right so based on this roadmap as we can see there's this thing as you can notice called the shadow palace which is the pve content this is probably the hardest pve one of the hardest pve content in the game and i hope you guys will prepare for it as well uh, some characters are going to be good there i'm going to make some guys so let's talk about why this gear set specifically the attack set is going to be the worst set later on right now early on in global cool if you have them use them two piece 
Now, you do not want to try to, you know, enhance them or try to further improve those gears. You, if you have any attack set, let's say you manage to get this on a T5 or T6, I wouldn't recommend enhancing the gear to like plus 3, plus 4. Now, the Shadow Hall gear sets are going to be better generally. You can see, for example, this one right here, the Spectral Bullet is one of it. You can see now you get an additional substat you, for the set option. You get attack and hit. Alright, so this one gives attack and crit damage. For Spectral Smite, Spectral Blaze gives attack and attack speed. Spectral Chain gives attack and crit. So you can see, if you have anything that's attack based right now, alright, if you manage to get something that's attack, it's gonna get power creep very hard later on from the Shadow Hall gear sets. Just to show you guys, it's a Shadow Palace right here. So you can do some of these Shadow Palace. I've already made guides of it. So you can see in the Action Center, you can buy all of these weekly which is pretty cool. This is also going to be one of the best gears that you're going to use in the long run. All right, until today, even though these gears are limited to T6, you cannot T7 them, but they're still very, very good. If you use a lot of mechs, if you use a lot of soldiers, the Shadow Hall gears are going to be your best friend. All right, so for now, don't worry about it yet, but knowing this, try not to focus on gathering too much or powering up too much of your attack options. All right, so I would say the attack options for now, just keep it as it is. Leave it at plus zero. Uh, especially if you're free to play, don't waste too much resources on powering them up. Now, how many options are there in the game? So you can go to the option list. You can see these are the options available. So what are the best options? So we need to talk about this. Uh, maybe I'll make a much more detailed video later on. But for now, if you see attack speed, you see skill haste, those are really, really good. Most counter characters will use skill haste. A lot of counter characters will also use attack speed. And it's so it's so good because it's going to require 4 piece, so this is going to be hard to use. Now in terms of crit damage, there's not much character that can use crit damage, and a lot of them, even if they could use crit damage, a skill haste and attack speed is just going to power crap them in general. And Xiaolin is one of the few that can benefit from crit damage, but there's not enough characters to justify hoarding a bunch of crit damage. Alright, in terms of the defensive set, obviously HP, defense, evasion are going to be your best ones. Uh, I would place HP at the at the highest priority if you're going for defensive gears. If you have a tank, a defender, ideally you want to give them HP sets. Now, for Awakened Hilde, you can always look at her set options and how you want to kit her. It's going to depend on their stats. So if you look at Awakened Hilde, she has the highest defense out of all the characters in the game. So going two-piece HP, Two-piece defense is going to be pretty decent, all right? You can also go with all HP, all right? You can also go, go with four-piece HP. I wouldn't recommend going for two-piece HP or evasion for her, all right? Her evasion is quite low. But some characters like Liumi, Liumi is a much more of an evasion-based tank. So going two-piece HP, a uh, two-piece evasion for her is going to be viable. Someone, if you look at their base stats, and if that base stat can basically increase up to more than 1,000, uh, that's a good one to use on her. For example, uh, Nayubin as well. Nayubin can benefit from evasion because he has the ability to reach up to 2000 evasion right here as you can see. All right, you can also go with four piece HP. Ideally, you can't choose your gears, you know, like if you get two piece HP, two piece evasion, just use it, right? I wouldn't like try to go and tune them specifically to HP because there's so much gacha involved. All right, you shouldn't waste your tuning binaries unless you know what you're doing. Ideally, have a plan going in forward. If you get two piece HP and two piece defense for for Awakened Hill Day, just use it. Especially if the gears are good, don't try to tune too much. Try to tune those anti sets instead. And speaking of which, let's talk about the hentai sets. Hentai. Now this is something that's going to piss off a lot of players. Whenever you tune your gears. You're gonna see this happens a lot. You're gonna get a lot of anti-sets. Now, what are the list of anti-sets in the game? So, we have anti-siege, we have anti-tower, anti-supporter, anti-ranger, anti-sniper, anti-defender, anti-striker. Alright, so, this, as you can see, what it does is it gives you 20% more damage towards that, cat that particular category. So, anti-ranger means you do 20% more damage to rangers. Alright, anti-supporter means you do 20% more damage to supporters, ideally. Now, how good are these sets actually? They are really, really bad. Alright, they are the worst category of all because you, when you go to PvP, you don't just fight one category of characters. Uh, enemy is going to use a bunch of different variety of characters, right? So it's hard to, to benefit from these sets, ideally. But what where they can be used, perhaps, is in the danger close. Now, 
I think Global don't have this yet, but Global will have this later on. So Danger Close is basically like a raid boss that you do every single week, and there's rankings as well that you can try to beat other players. But uh, if you don't care about rankings, you just want to get all the rewards, you don't have to worry about it too much. This boss right here, Solicitacio, she is a siege boss. So if you gear everyone with anti-siege gears, you're gonna get a better score generally. So should you keep some of these anti-siege? Probably yes, if you plan to play serious in Danger Close later on, if you care about rankings in like some of these PvE uh, rankings, sure, right? So every single boss that comes, for example, Regenerated Knight, you can see she is a sniper. So being a sniper, so that means anti-sniper is going to be quite good on her, right? This is something that you can give yourself food for thought, right? Uh, if you get some good ones, I would suggest just keep them for the time being. All right, before I get roasted in the comment section, I know somebody's going to type this already. Oh, how about uh, Kang So Young? Uh, she's very good. Yes, in PvP, generally, some characters can benefit from this. Uh, one of the few examples is Kang So Young. She is very good against snipers. Alright, if you guys are not aware, Kang Soyoung has the ability to deal more damage to Sniper, as you can see. Anti-Sniper damage is about 30%, so you can stack that. If you give her uh, Anti-Sniper, she's very good in getting rid of Snipers. You can kit some of the characters. Elizabeth with either Anti-Ranger or Anti-Supporter can be a good thing in PvP, uh, depending, right? So these are like niche little sets that you can try and kit out your character. I don't want to dive too deep into it uh, in this video. This is just going to be like a much more general video. But for overall general usage purposes, uh, you don't really use this most of the time in PV PvE contents. Now with that being said, let's talk about the best gears that you can ever obtain, period. And that is going to be none other than maze gears, generally. So where do you obtain maze gears? Maze gears are limited to the PvP shop. All right, if you go to the exchange center right here, you can see all of these maze gears. You should buy all of them. All right, so seasonal gears, they are not even close to how strong maze gears are. So maze gears should always be your priority. But which one do you buy first? It depends on you. If you run the counter team, obviously you buy the one for the counters, right? If you run a soldier team, you buy the one for soldiers. So make sure you buy the right one. If you if you run a mech team, so buy one for mech. If you have a titan, you can buy this, consider this. So why are this one so good? Why, what makes the maze gears so good compared to a lot of other, uh, let's say, gears out there? So let me buy some and I'll show it to you guys. So let's see if we get lucky with the sets. So ideally, since this is the best gear ever, this should be your tuning priority. You want to tune the maze gears first. So I got pretty trash stats overall. So I got crit right here. I got anti-supporter. I got hit. All right, crit and hit are the worst offensive set ever. All right, crit and hit are just the worst. So you ideally want to avoid crit and hit. Uh, I, some of you guys, maybe you play Genshin and in that game, crit, crit damage is insane. But in this game, uh, reducing the defense for enemy, you can debuff enemies' uh, defense, you can also debuff their damage resistance. It's going to give you much more in return of value overall. Uh, and the problem is crit, if I'm not mistaken, is capped as well at 85%. So the maze gears should be your priority to try to get a good one. So ideally, you want to try to tune this to as best as you can. Now, what would be the best one right here, right? So hit, I got evasion. Evasion is also a bad one. We're not gonna go with this. Uh, Anti-sniper, okay, um, kind of bad. So let's go one more and let's see if we can get lucky. Skill haste. Now this is good. All right, getting skill haste. I would say this is the most perfect set ever. This is the ideal set. I can't believe I just got an ideal set. Okay, so let's talk about maze gears in general, right? So why are the maze gears so good? Because of this set option right here, anti-ground damage. And notice you cannot change it. So you can basically improve this by using the purple ones. Again, if you haven't watched my farming guide, make sure you guys farm the purple binaries every single day. So ideally you want to tune this as much as you can. So this will go, it's going to improve going up to anti-ground damage 14%. So what the heck is anti-ground damage? Anti-ground damage basically means that your character is going to deal more damage towards ground enemy units. 14% right here. All right, so keep that in mind. So the maze gears are going to be your best friends moving forward for offensive gears. Now, for defensive gears, what would be the best one? The best one would be the Gordias sets. 
all right, that you can buy right now. Now again, it's available right here, depending on which one you want. I think Global do not have access to the Hummingbird sets yet. So Hummingbird sets will come with Danger Clothes. Uh, later, there will be one more shop for you to buy from the Danger Clothes shop. In the Danger Clothes shop, you can see you have access to this thing called the Hummingbird sets. This is like a weapon only. So Hummingbird weapon, Gorgias is for accessory. And then for the maze case, is actually the best one for the tanks. All right, so why is that? If you notice the maze hands, the weapon, it gives anti-ground damage 14%, right? But if you notice the maze case, they actually give anti-ground damage resistance. So basically this means that uh, instead of you doing more damage, you actually get less damage from ground units for 14%, which is a lot. So the if you get any of the maze case, those are going to be the best one for tanks, ideally. For defenders, some strikers, preferably. There's this term called Huma Gorgor. Alright, it's something that is the most ideal set for a lot of defenders out there. So what the heck is Huma Gorgor? Let me show you guys an example. This will be something that you want to strive towards at the end game characters or the end game gears. So Huma Gorgor means hummingbird, maze, Gordias, Gordias. So that would be the best ideal set for your defenders, for your tanks. All right, for example, right here in my Niobin, you can see I managed to get this. So the Hummingbird gives damage resistance, and then this maze case will give anti-ground damage resistance. All right, for Gordias, you can have melee uh, damage resistance on the, on the upper one for the Gordias crown. All right, and then for the Gordias movement, it will give range damage resistance. But for the bottom one, you can actually try and kit them towards anti-ground damage. So this one obviously is not tuned. Uh, you can always check the option right here, right? So Gordias is so good because you can actually get anti-ground damage resistance, which a lot of gears out there can never obtain. All right, so keep that in mind. That is something that you want to go or strive towards end game. Now this also jumps into uh, rates in maze gears versus why you shouldn't farm any other gears generally. Now if you guys notice my advice to you is to farm rates and that's the best place to get gears. All right, why you shouldn't do free contract uh, 333 or why you shouldn't come to the, the military supply acquisition. So if you farm here, you're gonna get the regular gears, the regular Dante gears. Now the regular Dante gears are worse in general because of the first option of the substat. You cannot change that to something that's viable. For example, let me show you guys Dante Crown right here. This is a T5. As you can see, the first option is limited to all of these flat stats. All right, it's HP, attack, defense, or crit, which is ideally really, really bad. So if you get any of these Dante crowns, they shouldn't be tuned at all. Even a T6, these are really not worth tuning. Please do not spend any of your binaries at all. Binaries are very valuable. You might have some early on. You know, once you go into endgame, you're going to realize how valuable those are. So don't waste them unnecessarily. Now, if you look at the SC gear, however, now, you get to tune, now you get a better option in general. All right, this option cannot be changed. SC gear from Britra rates are fixed to crit damage. All right, so it's always crit damage and having crit damage is going to be better than having this flat HP, flat attack, flat crit, flat defense. So SC gear is still kind of better in general if you're trying to farm for offensive gears for your units, for your characters in general. Now later on, you will have this rate called the inhibitor rate. Uh, again, that's going to be exchanged using the rate coins that I showed you guys earlier. Inhibitor rates are very good for tanks. All right, as you can see the option, now you can choose between anti-counter damage resistance, anti-soldier damage resistance, or anti-mech damage resistance. So the damage resistance meaning that you have 12% uh, is good in PvP. If you get anti-counter damage resistance, that means you're going to receive 12% less damage when you're fighting counter teams. Right, and then you can roll for anti-ground damage resistance ideally. So the best option, if you guys have been following me so far, ideally to get is going to be the anti-ground damage, anti-ground damage resistance, depending on which one you want. If it's for offensive, let's say for your Gayun, for your Kalwong, obviously you want to go for anti-ground damage or skill haze, right? So these two are going to be the best second substat right here. And then if for, for defenders, let's say you have an A heal day, Awaken heal day, Liumi, you know, Chifuyu, you want to make them tanky, anti-ground damage rest is going to be better. Everything else, I wouldn't bother, alright? Those are too specific. If you know what you're doing, for example, you want to specifically categorize your Chifuyu, 
to deal more against defenders. You can go for anti-defender damage if you are trying to build a, a DPS chief for you. That could also work, but it's just not recommended in the long run. These anti-sets or anti-substats, they just pale in comparison to anti-ground and skill haze generally. So uh, as a new player, what would be your end goal? Generally, for a lot of your maze gears, you want to tune them to either attack speed or skill haste. Skill haste is going to take precedence. Skill haste is going to be priority. In most cases, you want to have skill haste. Uh, if you ever get skill haste in any gears, try not to tune them away, man. Skill haste are just so valuable. All right. So let me show you guys an example of an end game uh, equipment that you can strive for. Something like this, like a maze gear, full attack speed. For example, this is very good for Awakened Seoyun. You have anti-ground damage. This is fixed, but try to tune the second substat to skill haze. So you get very high skill haze on her, 42% skill haze with 40% attack speed. Alright, this is something that you can strive for later on. Obviously, the maze case is not really needed. Like I said, this one is more for tank years, but it's just good to have the skill haze additional right here. So I just give it to her. Right, skill haze 11% and skill haste 11%. Now that one is a very good attack speed set. Now for skill haste set, if you get something like this, all right, you should tune the second option to 10% skill haste because T6 gives 10%. Ideally, this is something that you want to strive towards if you can, something like this. If you get a bunch of T6 gears, get skill haste as the second option. Now this will give you the ability to get up to 72% skill haste, which is what is your target, right? So you want to ideally get 72% skill haste on a lot of the DPS characters. You can also upgrade the T6 gears to a T7 eventually using maze gears, all right? And then once you do that, everything can be t upgraded even further. The skill haste can be increased slightly further and you will be able to get 76.2% skill haste. If you can get Huma Gorgor on your tank, that's going to be very, very good. That's going to be superior than everyone else uh, because if you get Huma Gorgor, right, uh, you can obtain up to 44% ground damage resistance. And that's the stats that you want to lean towards ideally because generally most of the uh, enemies in PvE and PvP is just ground units, all right? There's, you might fight some flying units here and there. For example, right now in Global, we have Evelyn and Rosara as air units, but there's just not many. Most of the units are going to be ground, so it's basically better to stack them up uh, in terms of PvE as well, which you're going to fight later on. Uh, a lot of harder PvE contents, the ground units are going to be very, very annoying. With that being said, let's move on into presets, something that you want to take advantage towards. If you do PvP a lot, alright, presets are very, very important. So what the heck is preset? So take advantage of this, I believe Global have this as well. I can just click on the preset, alright, go to this one right here, just uh, save it right there. So the next time, if let's say somebody else that I want to use, for example, Awaken Jushiyun, I can click on the preset again and I can do the same. I can just bring this gear forward. So please take advantage of the preset. It's basically a very, very good way to organize your gears. Ideally in PvP, a lot of characters are going to get banned. A lot of characters are going to get buffed. So you, having presets means you can swap their gears around easier. So you take less time doing so. Let's move on to exclusive equipment. This is something that I get asked a lot. Okay, so as you can see, these are all the exclusive equipments that I get. Eventually, you're going to be able to farm a lot of the exclusive equipments. Now, something that I don't recommend you guys to do is to try to tune or use any binaries at all on exclusive equipments. Generally, that's just how I look at it. So why is that? Because number one, exclusive equipments can be farmed. Something that can be farmed, you should never try to tune them. So you should try to farm until you can get a specific one. All right, so keep that in mind. That's my advice to you. Number two, the problem with exclusive equipment and tuning them is it's limited to that character. For example, this is Maria's weapon and you can only use it on Maria. So for example, if one week Maria is banned, then I can't use that gear that I pour so much investment and binaries on. So it's something that only whales should try and prioritize. If you're free to play, don't even think about it. It's not worth it. Even for me as a paying player in C server, I never bother to try to get any of this to a specific one. Keep in mind that every exclusive equipment, their substat, the first option is fixed and cannot be changed. So for example, this is Hans or Rims one. You can see uh, it's fixed at attack speed. 
Some are really really good like Carl Wong's one. Carl Wong has one of the best exclusive equipment. Carl Wong's one is Skill Haze. So you can get Skill Haze on the first one. On second one, you can also tune to Skill Haze again. That's why Carl Wong can reach 81% Skill Haze compared to regular 72% Skill Haze. But is it worth tuning though? I don't think it is because Carl Wong's one can be farmed as well. Same applies for Sylvia. It's also Skill Haze per se. You can try and tune this if you want. If you love Sylvia a lot, uh, she will get a rearm eventually. She has fallen off in C server, so I don't see the reason to try to tune this particular gear. So that's my stance on exclusive equipment. I don't think they are worth your binaries, not the gold binaries, not the purple binaries. Speaking of which, let's talk about ways for you to get tuning binaries. Now, uh, tuning binaries are kind of hard to get. They don't come or appear here, right? You cannot farm them. The only consistent way to get them every single month is to buy the 1000 quartz binary package every single month. That's limited once a month. And right now, uh, in challenge, you do have a way to get tuning binary, but I will always prioritize the maze gears first. The maze gears can only be purchased once. So try to buy all of them once because they are limited to only one time. Later on, once the Shadow Hall or Shadow Palace comes, you will have access to the Shadow Palace shop. Then you can buy a set binary, this one right here. Every single month, you can buy 50. And you know, 50 is not a lot, all right? You only get five chance to tune your gears if you get 50 because it's like 10 set binaries per tune for T6 gears generally. So in terms of tuning gears, if the gear is farmable, like if the gear is something that you can farm for rates, ideally, right? If it's a SC gear, I wouldn't tune them using set binary at all. The only gears that I'll focus on tuning the sets for right now is going to be the maze gears, it's going to be the Gordias gears, it's going to be those gears that you can purchase limited gears from the Gauntlet shop. Alright, so I think the video is kind of long and I, I think there's still a lot of things that I'm going to talk about which is the difference between T6 and T7. Uh, sadly, I'll have to bring that over to the next video because I don't want this video to be one hour long. As of now, the video is almost 40 minutes long before editing. So hopefully I'm going to edit it down to maybe 20 minutes. And yeah, hopefully Gears is something that's very deep in this game. But I think at least this will give you the basics overall. Hopefully, if I miss anything, again, feel free to type in the comment section below. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.